hello lovely humans and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie Wolfer. I am a wedding planner based in Southern California. If you guys haven't done so already, if you haven't checked out the master plan, I highly suggest that you do that. I'm not going to do a long explanation like I did in last week's video. I promise this intro is going to be a little bit shorter. But if you guys are interested in getting a little sample of what the master plan looks like, I have a free download over on my website for venue Q&A, um, catering Q&A and photographer Q&A just free for you all you got to do is like go to my website and download it so if you're interested if you kind of want to get a taste of what the master plan looks like I suggest that you jump on over there and uh, then you'll have your Q&A's for those three different vendors which could be super helpful for y'all speaking of venues this week's video is all about finding an inexpensive wedding venue this can be one of the biggest and most difficult parts I, I, in my opinion really picking out the venue sets the tone for almost your entire event it sets the tone for your vibe your decorations and even your budget um, and of course this is something we delve into really really deeply in the master plan to kind of talk about the pros and cons of each kind of venue but what I wanted to do this week is put together a list of cheap wedding venues um, and by cheap maybe I, cheap's a bad word cheap always sounds like it's not good quality um, inexpensive and maybe not considered wedding venues so without further ado let's just jump right on into it so for the sake of just clarity you can just kind of help our brains process a little bit I separated them into three different categories we have government owned private property and unique spaces government owned sounds Again, like not the greatest connotation, but it'll make sense. Venues like city parks are ridiculously inexpensive. Um, I know here in Southern California, we have so many beautiful parks that people can select from. And if you are a resident of that city or that county, your cost may be even lower than if you aren't a resident. So it's definitely worth looking into. And then there are state parks, which can be so stinking gorgeous yes you'll have to bring in more things yes you, your brain might have to work a little bit harder to make sure you have chairs a generator tables all of those sorts of things to kind of craft your own wedding venue from scratch but with a venue like this you're starting at such a low rate that you kind of have more financial room to do that oftentimes in city and or state parks there could be old buildings or a really pretty gazebo that you can get married underneath so it's not just like flat land with nothing happening there can be some architectural pieces that can really make a statement for your wedding another great spot government owned is a courthouse did you guys know that at some courthouses you can actually have up to a hundred people in attendance so it's not just like a small come in with a um justice of the peace and sign your marriage license it's it's it can be much bigger than that i'm pretty sure it would be ceremony only but it's going to be so much less expensive than some of the more traditional venues and lastly for the government owned category we have community centers i got married at a community center if you look at the photos and you look at the video it doesn't really feel like a community center and what i really loved about our wedding is that um i think we paid oh golly $800 for our venue and there were some limitations like we couldn't have champagne kegs or hard alcohol so we could only have beer and wine but that was okay with me the trade-off of getting a venue for less than a thousand dollars was 100% worth it and they had tables and chairs available I didn't like any of them so we ended, we ended up renting some anyways but the benefit of picking a place like a community center is they usually have a kitchen they usually have a prep space unlike the other government-owned ones that I have already talked about they may not have a prep space for catering and I know that a lot of places Places are really upping their community center game it's definitely worth looking into the next sort of cheap venue would be private estates or private locations the first of which would obviously be your own backyard now I've done a whole video on backyard weddings it's real old it's like way back in the day when I made this video but all of the stuff still applies even though I'm real awkward on the camera it's fine so I'm not gonna dive into details of like the pros and cons of a backyard wedding because there's a whole other video dedicated to that but obviously that's gonna be pretty cheap when it comes to the venue rental cost another private location would be either an Airbnb or a peer space location um, these are two different websites that offer offer home and or building rentals for your event again because they may not necessarily be designed to host a large amount of people when it comes to catering you may have to do a little bit of a build out or get creative or hire a food truck instead because you don't have a kitchen space for your caterer to work with but when you're spending three thousand dollars on a space instead of ten thousand dollars you got some wiggle room to work with there you know what I'm saying real quick though if you do decide to go with an Airbnb make sure they know that you are hosting a wedding like don't be shady about it I know you guys would never do that but I feel like I have to say that just as a disclaimer don't rent out a home 
for a wedding and not tell them it's for a wedding, okay? Because legal ramifications and stuff. And lastly, in the private estate, private sector, <laughs> <laughs> not the right term for this, is a field. I actually had a couple get married in a field in Julian. I mean, there was nothing around. They brought a little generator out for music for the ceremony. And it was, to this day, one of my favorite ceremonies we've ever done. Just this empty field with a couple of benches and the most beautiful arch backdrop that the bride DIY'd. I mean, ugh, I'm gonna put a picture in here. So if there is an empty space on a friend's property or something like that, that you could borrow for your ceremony and or reception, that could be such a great cost saving opportunity for you. I mean, like, don't just like find an abandoned field and set up camp, like you, you need to get permission, but it's an option. And then lastly, this section is pretty fun. It's unique venues. It's it's the kind of venues that you may not think about because they're not traditional. First of all, a museum or an art gallery. Talk about a wicked cool place to get hitched. There's gonna be beautiful backdrops. There's gonna be beautiful architecture. It's just such a different and unique space, especially if you're not going for like a major museum or a major art gallery, but potentially something a little bit smaller. They may not host a bunch of weddings, so they're really excited about it, and their fee is probably gonna be a heck of a lot smaller than most of the traditional venues. An aquarium, a zoo, or a botanical garden. Y'all, if I redid my wedding, I bet you know where I would get married. It would be at a botanical garden because I like plants. <laughs> I liked tropical house plants and you know, that's so I, I'm, I'm whistling a different tune now than when, when I got married a few years ago. But those are such unique locations and because they have so many beautiful elements like animals or these giant um, aquariums <laughs> or beautiful vines growing up all over the place, you already have so much of your decor spoken for. So you don't necessarily need to spend as much money on like a photo booth backdrop or on really lavish backdrop for your ceremony because you're already in such a creative and beautiful space. And it's cheaper than a regular venue. And the last grouping I have is like theater, library, and or school. There are so many beautiful, beautiful old theaters and libraries and schools out there. And while you would think of them for like a conference or some sort of large businessy style get together, most people don't think about using that as their wedding venue. But you guys, there are some gorgeous schools out there and some beautiful theaters and like the coolest libraries ever. You know those like epic steps leading up to them? Such good photo opportunities. I am like drooling already. So you know, just some food for thought. Maybe go back to school for your wedding. Okay, so did I miss any? Let me know if I missed any cool, creative, cheap wedding venues. Inexpensive, sorry. <laughs> inexpensive wedding venues in the comments below. I can't wait to hear from you guys. And then that can be a resource for anyone who's clicking on this video and they're like, I need to find a venue. And you could have the winning idea that helps them find a great spot to get hitched. So that's what we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for stopping by. Again, if you're interested in getting the free download for the venue Q&A, catering Q&A, and photography Q&A, go to jwcoordination.com um, slash the master plan, I think. I'm gonna put it right here. And if you're interested in purchasing the master plan, go to the masterplanwed.com. If you haven't done so already, like this video, subscribe to this channel because we're almost at 50K, US queen. And until next week, bye guys.